All right, so I had a job in Japan for two weeks before I got fired, and this job was kind of crazy. The office had a sex doll inside of it, and not just one of the normal ones, like the just the lower half of the the body. This was like a full on like thousand dollar full body sex doll that was used. So I'm not gonna talk about what the job. What the company was, what the employer was, or anything like that, because it wasn't a bad company. Actually, I had fun at this company. I was a marketing manager, and I got to work directly next to the CEO, the owner of the company, all day long. And he worked with tons of celebrities, and so I got to hear a bunch of cool and interesting stories. So that part of the job was pretty good. But some things about the job. That I didn't like was that even though I could do this job easily from home, I had to take a around one and a half hour to two hour commute every single day. So two hours to the office and two hours back.、Um, one of the other things was usually as a marketing manager. You get to be a little bit creative. So I was the one making the advertisements, making the videos for this company, and. Generally, when I had experience in this position previously, the company gives you a general idea of what they want, and they let you kind of do your magic. They let you do your work, and then you show the result. You get the views, you get the subscribers, and then the company is pretty happy.、Uh, in this case, I kind of learned. So Japanese style work is completely different from a normal style company.、Uh, basically. I've read tons of posts and articles on Reddit about how Japanese companies—they love to micromanage you. They treat you like a child, like a literal infant baby who just is learning how to get their first steps, how to walk, and they guide you through everything. And they sit there and they micromanage you, and they just don't let you have the freedom.、Uh, this is completely different in Canada. I was never micromanaged. It was never. Never an issue for me, and so this was kind of something new. Anyways, in Japanese culture, I learned that usually they don't want to fire you. Companies like having a track record showing that they don't fire employees. What they do do is they give you less shifts, less things to do, or days off. So they cut your hours and they don't give you anything to do. And so I thought, well. That's not too bad. It gives me more time to work on my videos and stuff.、Uh, but they still want the full 100% from you, even though you're taking those days off. Like they give you those days off.、Uh, for example, let me let me give you some context here. When I first started at this company, I was there five days a week, and then so the first week I'm there every day, and then the second week I was there for three days a week. They told me not to come in for Tuesday, Wednesday, and then on the third week they told me I should just come in for one day. And on the second week, I started looking for other jobs as I'm looking for full-time work. So I ended up getting a part-time job as a background actor, working in the you know behind the scenes on Netflix shows, walking in the background, being an extra, and. Because of this job, sometimes you have commitments. So let's say there's a filming day on Tuesday, but they didn't get all of the material they need. So there's another shoot on a Wednesday, and since you're in the Tuesday shoot, now you have to be in the Wednesday shoot. But the following week, I had another shoot, and it was on a Wednesday. And the boss said, "The only day I need you next week is Wednesday. You can only come in one day next week on your supposed to be full-time job as an editor." So okay. Now I have to choose between working as a background actor, which I can do multiple times a week, and I can film videos like this, work on my channel while I'm doing the、uh, acting job, or I can work as a video editor for this company that's giving me less and less hours. So I chose the acting job. I was hoping, since the company only needs me, the video editing company is only giving me one shift a week, that maybe I can still keep it. And still go in there once a week, but 
after telling them that uh, I have to do this acting job and I have another follow-up acting date for a Netflix show, the editing job, the my marketing manager position was immediately terminated. So I worked there for a total of two weeks. I didn't even get a chance to work the third week and do my one shift. Uh, upon hearing this, that I had another acting job, they just immediately fired me. And mind you, this is like a little bit unconventional for Japanese. Usually Japanese companies don't fire people, but this particular one, particular company, I guess, really didn't care. They just wanted to move on and find someone else who they can reduce their shifts to. But let me explain the problem here. So maybe the results weren't so good as a marketing manager. Usually I can get more views, more subscribers, more sales, creating interesting videos. Except in this case, being micromanaged so much, the owner of the company had a specific way he wanted his videos and I couldn't deviate from that. I couldn't create videos my style. And his style was like more of an old advertisement, like something you'd see on TV, on an infomercial in the 90s. Like think of like the, the advertisements that come on TV after midnight and just show the product and give you like a number to call and you can order it and link to their website. So the videos weren't that interesting. And when I tried to create interesting videos, the, the owner of the company would shut them down and just tell me to go back to creating his style of videos that never got really any views or any traction. So because of this, I've changed from a marketing manager to a background actor as my career in Japan, uh, which is kind of interesting because now I get to be on some Netflix shows and stuff and my schedule is a little all over the place, but it gives me more time to make videos like this. Also, if you're in my position as a foreigner in Japan who isn't fluent in Japanese, you kind of only have two options. Usually you're a programmer or a English teacher. So to deviate from that and get a job as a marketing manager and an actor, I, I kind of feel still pretty good about it. So those are some of the things that I have been doing and this is how I got fired from my very first full-time job. My first real job as a marketing manager in Japan. I lasted two weeks before I got fired. Um, reasons for it were I think that I wasn't allowed to be creative. I wasn't allowed to make my style of videos. I had to stick to like a 90s infomercial, just put the ad up, put the company logo up and show a clip. And then the manager's wondering why it's not getting any views or any traction. Well, it's because people don't really want to see that anymore. They want, you know, interesting style videos. They want engaging content. They want fast content. So yeah, because of this, I was fired and I learned my lesson. Japanese companies love to micromanage you. They want, they will start cutting back your shifts. You don't really get an opinion or a way to be creative. You just follow the script, which as a background actor, the same thing is just following a script. They have how they want it to be done. I just, as a background actor, it's fine. I don't need to be creative. I can just listen to them and do it. And then as a background actor, there's plenty of free time so I can do videos and keep up my YouTube channel. So if you're wondering about Japanese content or a foreigner living in Japan or just general, <laughs> I hope interesting content, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'm really trying to grow this YouTube channel so that I can be a full-time YouTuber here in Japan and every little bit helps.